Um, this week, we've got Glenn Russell from uh, Russell Financial Services. Um, he's joined us. Obviously, we want to talk about his business and that kind of thing, but specifically, Russell has built up an incredible following, but also lead generation machine through the power of TikTok, which um, not everyone thought could be done in the mortgage industry. So first of all, thanks for taking the time to speak to us today, Glenn. Yeah, that's okay. No problem. Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. So just if you could just tell us initially just about your kind of mortgage journey to where you are now, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been in financial services for 20 years, just over. Um, but I started my actual mortgage journey in 2015. So I was a bank manager for eight years before that. And then I've done various other roles uh, before I got to that stage. But uh, basically, I was just I'd had enough of the red tape within the corporate banks um, and just couldn't see that work life balance working for me long term. Um, so it was great. I learned a lot. But I wanted to do something which was going to allow me to, uh, you know, start a family, have a better work life balance and look at some of the things that I want to do in life, as well as still the customer service side for, for people. So um, while I was at the bank, I studied to do my uh, CMAP qualifications. I've done that in my own time in the evenings. And um, yeah, and then really just from speaking to a few different people that was in the industry that took the leap a few years beforehand um, in sort of like investment and pension side, but not mortgages. They said, you know, just absolutely do it, give it a go. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to an employed role. So I thought, well, do you know what? If if I don't do it, I'm, you know, I'm never going to know. So um, left uh, a fairly well-paid, employed, safe local job, and had my home laptop, my mobile, and a makeshift business card, which, you know, isn't the same business card I've got now. And uh, my wife went to work, shut the door, and she said, good luck. And that was it. And uh, yeah, I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have any customers. Um, I didn't have any. Quickly, how old were you then? How, what age were you? Because I speak to a lot so, of people in the banks, always frightened of kind of making that leap into broken, but. I know once you've been there so long, it's kind of institutionalized. So how old were you when you made that decision? 30, just coming up to 33. Cool. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was that point in my life where I thought, well, do you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it and I'm going to try. And um, so I used a lot of the skills that I developed really from the banking world with customers and knowledge and, and tried to integrate that into, into my own business. So, um, hence, the, the business name is Russell Financial Solutions. It's got no wording of mortgages in it at all. Um, and purely because it was only ever going to be me. And I, would, I didn't want to, to build a, a, a big business. It was always just going to be me. I wanted to do enough, see enough clients to be able to um, really sort of sustain our lifestyle and have a work-life balance. And that, that was it. I drilled it right down. Um, yeah. And it's just organically grown to a, a slightly bigger business today sort of nearly was well, eight years old in in january amazing so talk to me about the business like before the big social media um following and that kind of thing talk to me about your lead gen and where the business what the business looked like then yeah so i mean to, to start out i didn't like i said i didn't have any leads at all um my my first customer was my wife's uncle um, and i think he only done that just to try and help me out and make, make me feel good and he did. It was, it was amazing. Got me the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you you got a, you know family and friends. They're the, they're your bread and butter. Um, but uh, it, it really, I was like, right. Well, how am I going to increase this uh, workflow? No one knows me. There's a lot of local competition, mortgage brokers, even in my town where I live and the surrounding town. So um, what I done is I got suited and booted every single day, like I would as if I was going to work. And um, I Googled all the local estate agents, accountants, solicitors, anyone in finance in my local area and in the surrounding towns. And I walked up and down the high street. And I think this is the big bit that people are surprised about. I, I literally door to door walked in the estate agents. And I got a lot of no's, a lot of laughs and we're not interested. And especially if I walked in and spoke to the actual in-house mortgage broker that was sitting there. That was embarrassing. <laughs> You'll get a lot um, of feedback from them. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I just, it was persistence really. And I just, I carried, carried on doing it. And um, after about four to five weeks, 
um, a couple of them actually said, well, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll throw a few over to you because they weren't happy for whatever reason with their current broker or company they're referring to. And um, basically, the, I managed to convert them leads. And, you know, because I didn't have a massive amount of clients, the, the service level, as you can imagine, it was incredible. Impeccable, um, yeah, if you've got and, yeah, but the, the one thing that I really wanted to do is make sure that that service level didn't drop just because my client bank increased. So everything really was about the service for me because um, I saw how that can snowball just from looking after the customer. Yeah. And uh, so long story short, I organically grown, built more and more customers. Um, and I started to work alongside two new estate agents. So one of the more established ones weren't interested uh, yeah. and obviously big corporate names. Um, but there was a couple of local ones which just started out or a year old. So they were in the similar sort of journey. And I was just very honest with them. I said, look, I'm on a similar path to you. Um, I'm learning as well as, as you guys. Uh, it'd be great if we could be on the journey together. And um, some of the estate uh, that, that grew and actually some estate agents then contacted me as my business got bigger. And then they wanted um, in-house brokers to be in their bran individual branches. So again, that's how we organically grown. I took brokers on to be placed into their estate agents. And it just naturally grew, really. Um, unfortunately, some of the related... Sorry to, to interrupt, but you've done amazing with lead gen. But more importantly, if people just think it's kind of a, an easy out, if you like. Oh, you got lucky with TikTok or whatever it is. But you worked your ass off before that. Get, you already had it in your psyche to have to go out and win business. I think there's Absolutely. too many people that go self-employed and they go, you know, where's the business? Where is it? Like, you, you went knocking door to door. So, yeah. although the TikTok thing's incredible you already had that in your, your mindset was already, I need to go out and earn money. So I think that's important for people to understand when they start out, it's really easy to sit at home and wish you were busier. Absolutely. And one thing I would definitely say is everyone surrounding you when you're thinking of making a decision will say, you'll do really well and it'll be great. And then when you take that leap, everyone's still saying you're going to do really well, you'll do great. But you're like, right, but you know, I, I still need the business. I've still got bills yeah. and a mortgage to pay and, and reality kicks in very quick. Um, but that was my incentive. And, and to go right back to the, your, your first question, basically how, in my mindset, how I done it is I gave myself three months. So I saved my outgoings for the equivalent of our outgoings for three months. And that was my goal. And I thought I've got that as a buffer. And if I've not yeah. brought an income into the household within three months, there's an issue there, or I've got to change my tactic. Um, and that was my driver and that's what got me up and that's what pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. And um, th there's an element of luck, but also if I hadn't have gone knocking door to door or going on Google and picking up the phone, then that luck wouldn't have appeared because no one knew I exactly. existed in, luck, in the yeah. world. Yeah. The age old adage of the harder you work, the luckier you get. It's not luck. Do you know, there's people at home, like I said, just I speak to brokers all the time when they say it's just not working for me. I said, what are you doing? And they're like, well, what do you mean? Well, you, business doesn't come to you. <laughs> That's not the way it works. You gotta go yeah. and get it. You gotta get lucky by working hard. So it's interesting that although the TikTok thing is incredible, you actually yeah, already I had mean, that mindset. I've got to go out and earn money. Yeah, absolutely. And TikTok is just a recent thing. I mean, it's just over a year that I've been doing it. Um, and obviously my business is eight years old in January. So um, and some another learning curve for me was some of them estate agent relationships broke down through them years purely because they wanted to venture into our revenues um, and it didn't work with what I wanted to do. And it's absolutely fine. You know, that happens in any business. Um, but then one of the estate agents, the original ones that gave me an opportunity nearly eight years ago, our office is above their office in the high street now. Right. So, you know, that's a really solid relationship and they know where I've been going in my career and I've seen how they've developed as well and, and grown. So there's, there's one thing I would say is, you know, nothing's ever certain and forever. I think you need to adapt, especially in this industry and have multiple lead streams. And that was a big learning curve for me with COVID. Um, you couldn't do the face to face. You couldn't necessarily do the door knocking. It was very, very hard to, um, you know, promote the business. So that's why I turned to social media and, and I'm really not techie. And, um, you know, the, it's not one of my strengths, but I thought, well, 
I've got to make it a strength and that's how I try to look at other platforms to get out there to a wider audience rather than sort of like local people. Yeah, that makes sense. So did you start it during COVID or was that just the thought process started then or was it just well, thinking actually, about LinkedIn? Yeah, I actually started YouTube um, and YouTube is a really hard nut to crack because... Well, I don't know, you know, I've already got nine subscribers, Glenn, so... Well, it's smashing it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I know, I know how hard it is, and it, it really, you know, you get some people that go on there, and I mean, just to get one subscriber, for someone to actually want to follow your journey, um, is is a huge compliment, to be honest. And and I think that when you see all these YouTubers, and you know, and they've got hundreds and or millions of subscribers, you could take it for granted but until you actually do it yourself you don't realize how much work editing time um, thinking of the content and trying to relate it to people and it is I found it quite heartbreaking because I could spend I've got a young family I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old um, and I was taking time out of the evenings to do YouTube and to try and promote you know mortgage knowledge and I've got some buy-to-let properties as well personally so I've sort of um, documented my story of how I've purchased them, how I come to find them deals, and tried to. It's all related to property, hence my TikTok name, Glen Russell Property. There's loads of different elements around that. And um, the one thing that I found really, really hard with YouTube is that I could spend all that time and then I'd upload the video, come back, you know, even a day later and look at it, and I've got four views. And that was probably my family. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, I am concerned that my nine subscribers are actually, uh, I've got four kids and then extended family, so that's probably my nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just really hard and I just thought there's got to be another way. I'm, I'm confident that my contact, uh, my content is, is fairly good. Um, and I've got a lot of content from customers. You know, I yeah. use real life scenarios. And um, how can I get this out there and um, yeah so that's why I just changed platform and um, and tried TikTok. So let's talk about that so the decision the TikTok decision obviously because no one was really doing it I mean people are jumping on it now but realistically I mean I was one of them that sort of took the mix saying who's watching it you know it's my yeah. I've got four kids so I just saw my kids using it to do dance routines on so that was my kind of that was my knowledge of TikTok so Talk me through that, that that decision to just go let's try that and i was trying it uh, i think that's exactly what it, the reason why no one was trying it um and i went on to tiktok purely because i can't remember who it was it might have been one of my team that said that they'd seen a video on tiktok and um there were some financial people on there and they were doing a few little different methods of, and i thought actually i'm actually watching it i didn't go on there to find this person whereas like with YouTube you really have to search unless yeah. you're quite a big player and it will come up on the feed um, whereas with TikTok it's a lot fairer platform so it doesn't matter whether you have one follower or a million followers if your video it goes on something called the for you page um, and if that goes on um, there and it's someone stops and, and actually watches it and they're interested in it then the algorithm picks that up and pushes it further so if your content's good then it's a lot fairer and people can then interact it's a fair crack at the, the views then is that Absolutely. So that's the reason you kind of explain that again to people if they're new to TikTok so they initially push it out to how many people so what happens is you can do they do it in chunks so um, you can do a 15 second video a 30 second uh, sorry a 15 second a minute or three minutes now the way they look at it is a 15 second video the person watching it when it comes up if they go into TikTok it's something called a for you page so it might not have any relevance to you but TikTok have thrown it out there and if you watch that full 15 seconds of that 15 second video that you've uploaded they see that that person has engaged with that because right. it's very very easy to swipe 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 within a second if it doesn't catch your attention and they will have to watch a hundred percent of that 15 second video if you do a video for a minute, then they're a little, they're more lenient. So it's around sort of 70% um, has to be watched. And if you right. go for three minutes, then it's around 50% of it has to be watched and they still see that as good content. So what I tried to do, and I only found that out because I just 
done a bit of research on TikTok and how the algorithm works. So I thought I went straight into YouTube completely blind and I think I could have done it differently, but I'd already started. So I didn't want to start again. Yeah. Um, so TikTok, I'd done my research first and before I even uploaded anything. And um, the way what happens is you, you upload that video that goes to a hundred people. I think it's within the first hour. It might be a thousand people in the first hour. And if a large percentage of that, say for instance, a thousand people watch that video, then TikTok algorithm goes, oh, people are interested in this video. And then they send it out to a further 10,000 people. Right. And say for instance, 8,000 out of that 10,000 watch it. And they're maybe inter interacting, liking it, sharing it, commenting. TikTok go, oh, people like that as well. Yeah, we'll share it to a hundred thousand people. And then we'll send it to half a million people and then a million right. people. And then it just goes. So that's the reason that's, then. That, that's the reason that some of your videos will have a few views and nothing comes of it. And then others just go for, completely through the roof of millions. Absolutely. The, yeah. And, the beginning. and then obviously the content's got to be good, but it's relevant to who's clicked on it and who's looked at it the longest. And then TikTok make that decision yeah, to, to um, or the algorithm makes that decision to chuck it out to more people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and that's the thing that, you know, I say to people that are trying it, you, you could do one video that could get a million views and you could do the next video that could get a thousand views. You can't take it to heart. Yeah. Um, if you were to look on my TikTok channel, you, you can see that some of them have got 3000 views. And then like you say, you know, one of my highest ones got 2.6 million views. Um, and it's me writing on a notepad while I was on hold to a mortgage lender. <laughs> incredible uh, you can't pick because i i think that and i also think about like linkedin content for me not um, i might get some that have next to no views but get a really high hit rate of people coming back to me on it and other things thousands of people will look at it and comment on it and share it and you don't get any kind of no one ever comes back and says oh i saw that that particular piece so you can't just rely on how many people are looking at it obviously it's a numbers game in a sense but some yeah, of it's yeah, numbers important it's, to some people the biggest thing I found is just consistency um, and it's whatever works for, for you as an individual really but Tuesdays is my main day that I do social media um, because I've also got an office out in, in my garden where I kitted it up really for the social media and for me to do my day job as well when I'm not in the office in, in the high street Yeah, and um, that allows me to have a, a, set, a space that's set up for me to be able to focus on my content and I can record loads of content, put it into drafts, and then I've got loads of stuff that I can put out during the week. Right. Do you because, schedule it then to go out or? Um, generally, I try and do it around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. It just seems yeah. to work for me. I did try posts in the evening as well, but I didn't really get as much traction. So I think, I don't know why, but for some reason, the algorithm on my channel around 10 or 11 o'clock, it seems to pick, it gets more views. Um, but I've spoken to other TikTokers and they've um, they've said that they do it at seven o'clock in the evening and it works. Oh, really? So it's, it's one of them things you just have to try and, and test it really. Because LinkedIn is a, um, I, I always do stuff at like three or four o'clock in the morning when I think of something, I do it and then I've got a hold fire because I know that no one's looking at it then. And it's that magic hour at the beginning, isn't it, where um, yeah. you were actually looking. Absolutely, yeah. Good. So talk to me about because everyone's got an excuse why they don't use social media, right? You would have had a million excuses in your head before you use TikTok. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about how you handled that at the beginning, especially like the naysayers. We've talked about this before about the the, the passive aggressive Mr. TikTok, you know, the um people that say it doesn't work and that kind of thing. How did you how did you handle that? And how did it obviously I don't suppose you get it as much anymore because it works, <laughs> but talk to me about the beginning. You'd be surprised. Um it, you know, even it is it's hard to when you're talking in front of a camera and it's just real factual stuff and it's quite boring. You know, I mean, the industry can be quite dry, can't it? You know, it's very, very fact sort of driven and data driven. Yeah. I mean, if, unless you're looking for something and you've got a real interest in it, people don't really search for it. So that's that's why I tried to make a spin on it. And if not like some of my videos, I, I created two characters. So I've got me as the boring mortgage broker. Um, and the guy and with then yeah, and I've got a guy with a scarf, or um, I've even got him here. The guy, it's only a pair of shades, you know. Um, 
And were you conscious I, of that when you started it then? Because it's not like serious mortgage broking, like did that, did yeah, that come up? That, that's exactly what I wanted to do because I thought I know, and I, I think it was again one of my team or a family member, they said, you know, could have even been my wife. She said, you know, if you're going to put your face out there on TikTok, you're going to get a lot of people that are going to have a real go at you. Um, and I said, yeah, I know, but if I can try and dilute that by sort of taking the mick out of myself first, sort yeah. of taking all the fuel out of the fire, really. Um, yeah. So I tried to do that and I thought, right, well, I will be the straight laced mortgage broker very very factual and then i'm going to be the customer and use loads of different real life scenarios of what people ask me and what situations customers get themselves in and i'm going to use that as my content but i wanted to make the guy the character with um the glasses and the scarf and the jacket the interesting bit that's what the people want to watch they don't want to watch me me that character he's always trying <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and it's just me and I literally you know and again that was a learning curve just trying to do that and learn how to do it with the camera and changing outfits all the time and stuff and but once you put it all together and then you start getting feedback from people and you get good and bad you get some people say you can't be busy if you've got time to do that well <laughs> The, the thing is, I've, I have got a team, you know, there's a team of eight of us um, yeah. now, including me. So while I'm doing the social media content, after it's gone out, that's when I get the messages through TikTok, the um, messages through Instagram that's linked through to TikTok, the website hits the emails and it all comes through. And then I filter that to my team and yeah. I say, here you go, guys, here's a first time buyer or a remortgage, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and then they're the ones that can contact the client and then help them handhold them through the process and or even answer the question and it's and it's converted into business so i think on the face of it you know the naysayers and the people that don't believe in it they'll always look for a reason not to do it or um a negative side to it and i think they're not the business people in the world either the people the naysayers are not you know what I mean? The people that have come up with an excuse as to why they don't do it is because they're too busy and that kind of thing. I just, yeah, I, and I, I think, just think they like, you know, there's also the same ones that are buying these off the internet, you know what I mean? And not, um, yeah, exactly. And I think you don't, as long as you can, you don't need to buy leads, you can build, you know, you can get, as long as you build trust and you're honest with the client and the audience, then they will approach you. And I've even said to myself, I can't believe people approach me about the biggest transaction of their life through TikTok. Talk to me about some of the customers then, because people will assume it's 14 year olds looking for dance videos. Talk to me about some of the customers you picked up through that, that side of the lead generation. All over the country. Um, so I'm based in Essex. Um, and we've, we've got clients. I mean, we had clients all over the country anyway, as we've got bigger, but TikTok has just opened so many more doors. So, um, you know, we, I had a customer, which I passed to one of my team and he was in his fifties. And I always ask now, I always say, can I just ask for our records where you, where you got our details from? And he went, uh, well, um, I'm sitting in traffic. I'll be honest with you, Glenn. I said, okay. And he said, I'm sitting in traffic in London. And my son told me about this app called TikTok. I was like, okay. <laughs> and he said, and you come up. And I listened to what you said and I click through to your website and um, you, you're not actually too far from, from where one of my houses is. I was like, oh, okay, great. And he's actually a portfolio landlord and he owns multiple businesses. And just from that chat over the phone, um, you know, that developed into, uh, into a client and he knows other clients and it's just naturally built. And that was a 15 second video of me you know, with a pair of shades on and it, and it engaged him. Um, That's incredible as well, because there'll be so many people saying like, you don't get the engagement from it and that kind of thing. Like, like you just said then, there's a guy in his mid fifties sat in traffic, which ends up being a really substantial client for you. It's not, yeah. do, you, do you get actually from TikTok, do you get like the kids telling their parents side of things? Does that come up? Because obviously it is a young, majority of people on there are young, but I'm not saying they all are, but does that come up? Yeah, I mean, we get, oh, yeah, my son or my daughter shared this or, um, and the thing is what I do is I try and repurpose content. So the, TikTok is a really easy 
app to to master because there's so many good things on on the actual app that you can even if you're not very techy and what i've done it automatically saves the video onto your phone as well so what i do is then i repurpose that and then i, I share it on linkedin and i share it on instagram and facebook so there's a wave of me over social media with all at the same time which a lot of people probably can't stand but <laughs> but it is what it is they don't have um, to look at it they can scroll yeah, on yeah, by that's, it. that's it <laughs> um and you know so there's totally different demographic of people on all of them platforms so i have you know a different age demographic following on instagram but then i have a lot of older people on facebook but they're still interested in the content um and they right. like and comment and share um and so it's spread across all of it but I'm, i've only done the work once but i'm sharing it across all of them and I have we have a real big age range. I mean, a lot of first time buyers, a lot of people that are just starting the journey. So we can guide them right at the beginning. Yeah. And um, and then we have, you know, investors that have got multiple properties, um, you know, in limited companies, very, very successful people in their own right, you know, clients in London. So we've got a real mixed bag. So someone just asked a question actually come through on that. So I thought I'd jump on it because it's what we're talking about at the moment they they said about their i know you said about the multiple kind of lead streams but maybe tiktok won't last forever or maybe that and they actually said would you go back to youtube now now that you're a tiktok pro and you've got the social media knowledge would you look at the other platforms again or is it just just working so well for you what's your what's your kind of plan i think that question is absolutely right i think tiktok you know i think every platform has its um peak times and you know that could something else could come in next year you just don't know um but i never say never to anything because i can always go back but the big thing for me was chunking time i mean at the moment i still do the day job so i'm still before we come on here um i've done a mortgage application after this i've got another mortgage application to do uh, for just all social room. media all day, then you've actually got to do some uh, mortgage advising. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I don't have that luxury. Um, I still have a client bank. I haven't taken me personally any new clients on for around two years because I just service my existing client bank. Yeah. Um, but my team take on the new clients. Um, so it's not something that I would really, I would never say no to, to YouTube, but I think it is a lot. If you're starting out in social media, it's a lot harder. To, yes. to crack that unless you really find a real niche and you find something that's going to really engage with people then great but don't be disheartened if it doesn't just take off straight away that's all i'd say uh, they've also asked a, a similar thing i know you said you somebody to dedicate to tuesdays but how much time would you say you dedicate to social media because there's going to be those people that go i haven't got hours and hours on end but actually in regards to content i mean how much time does it actually take so do you know what? It's amazing what you can get done if you're organized. Um, and like I said, my 2.6 million views on my videos because I was on hold to a lender for 40 minutes and I was doodling on a notepad. And to, just to prove that I'm not lying, there's the notepad. <laughs> and, um, did you video I, yourself doodling it or did you? No. So what, I, so what I done is I was doodling and I was just drawing a house and I was doing a buy to let scenario because I, I like I said, I, I I've got some investment properties and I was just running some figures through on a pad and I yeah. thought, oh, that works. Actually, that could that could be good. And then while I was looking at it, I thought, actually, I'm sure that other people would probably want that worked out as well. So what I've done is I, I then um, went for it again in a, in a lot clearer fashion. And once I'd got off <laughs> on hold for the mortgage lender, um, I just picked my phone up, plugged my microphone in and just filmed it me holding it over a notepad and then i just talked through the scenario yeah. and that because i'd already done the work while i was on hold i could have just been sitting there looking out the window but i didn't and that was and then that ended up going viral so um, and if you look at some of my other videos as well you can see that i'm walking the dog um yeah. so in the morning before i go into the office or before my first appointment i'm walking the dog so I get some really funny looks when I'm walking along the street and I've got my phone up in the air and I'm chatting away to it. Um, but, you know, I think you just have to get past that mindset now. And, you know, that can be a 30 second, 15 second video. 
uh, just a hints and tips and I upload it. So it's all, it's, I'm still doing the same hours in the day, but the little pockets of time where I'm not actually talking to a client or I'm not in front of a, a laptop, that's how I try and maximize my time for yeah. the social media. And do, are you obviously, if you think something, are you like me, chuck it in your notes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you used to look at my phone now, I've got pages and pages of content ideas and hints and tips, and then I try and put it in relevance of what I think is relevant for the market at the moment. Um, and I try and mix it up as well. But even things like, um, especially with TikTok, I try and keep a theme. So the color theme for my business is um, blue, black and white. So right. generally, when you look at my videos, like the wall behind me, this is in my office at home. I've got one single wall, which is blue. The rest of my office is white. Um, but I wanted this background and then the, the plant, which is a feature. So there's consistency where people subconsciously aren't just staring at my face in the video. They'll look at stuff in the background, like the plant or the print. Say, actually, that's interesting. Like, I, I do my videos in my office normally. So there's always a white background, as I said, on the wall that was there way before I started doing videos. So it wasn't like it was there intentionally. But yeah, I always think like it's a bit boring for people because they always see the same thing. But do you actually think it connects people to you? Like, oh, I recognize this guy. He said something useful before. Like, do you think it makes him stop having that? Um, yeah, that bit of absolutely. Universe? Yeah, I do. Because again, that was something that I actually learned through YouTube. Um, consistency and it's sort of brand awareness now if i had everything red behind me but my actual website and my business was blue people subconsciously wouldn't link the two whereas everything right. is very blue white and black with everything that i do even sort of like if i'm filming i'll wear like a blue or a white or a black t-shirt or jumper and but i always try and have a little a feature in the background like a plant or something to draw the eye so it's not just a blank canvas in the background because people do, that's what they do. They will look at you, but then they'll look around you as well, naturally. And when they'll go on to, say for instance, my TikTok, they'll see consistency, which is more easy on the eye, which means more people will then engage more. Believe it or not, I never believed this myself, but since doing it, you, you do seem to get a lot more engagement from a, 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 a consistent theme. Really, that's interesting. Because I just, I just assume that mine, it's just a bit boring because people see the same thing. But yeah, it's interesting that you would think it kind of triggers something that they know, they know what you're about if they've seen it before. Yeah. So, talk to me about what the difference is in your business now. Now with TikTok and with that, what, how, what has that meant for your, for your business? It's just grown with, you know, like I mentioned before, with um, lead streams. It's one thing. Um, if you rely too much on one stream of leads, for instance, if you're working alongside an estate agent or an accountant or a solicitor, you're relying on someone else's business to generate your business. And I yeah. think COVID was a real turning point for us where, you know, a lot of businesses really hit a wall or, you know, their, their mindset was totally different. And I just think I'd, that was an alarm, but we wasn't hit that bad to be fair because the industry, you know, in the property market and that done, done well with the stamp duty and um, holiday and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. but it, it was a trigger to me to say, well, actually, we need to really be standing on our own two feet and not relying on leads from other businesses. Hence the reason why I thought, well, let's generate it ourselves. And I spoke to the team um, and some of them just want to keep their head down, get on with the job, earn the money. And that's absolutely fine. Um, whereas I wanted to get out there more and try and generate the business from areas that we hadn't yeah. touched really. And I would now say that the, the change in the recommendations, we always got the recommendations, which is great because I say service is such a you know, priority for me and the whole team. Yeah. But I would say probably 75%, if not more now, is generated through word of mouth and social media. Um, I would say even higher percentage than that. And the our other lead streams now are a lot less, uh, which is great for me as a business owner because I can see that if any door shuts, then we're control of the door that generates the most business now anyway. Yeah. Um, and that gives you reassurance, it gives the team reassurance as well. And also, again, it goes back to time. If we want to up the game, you know, we allocate more time to social media. 
if we want to ease off, we we don't put so many videos out there. And yeah. it's a lot more. Um, Is it, can you yeah. control the lead stream literally like that? Like you would turn something on and off. Like if I need more leads, I could put on more social media. Is it, has we got that much control now being as the machine that it is? Um, I think so. Yeah. I mean, one of the videos, the, the buy to let one that's done really well. And there's a, there's a few that unfortunately enough that have gone quite viral. Um, you know, the, the leads that we were getting through, um, like anything, you're going to get leads, which aren't great, but then you are going to get those nuggets in there that are really great. Um, but the day that, actually, because you're, sorry to interrupt, but it's because you're looking at such a vast audience on TikTok, does that mean that you get more tire kickers or does it mean like the, how is the quality then? Um, I suppose it's only the same as any kind of, for any kind of lead generation, isn't it? You're going to get it varied, but is it very much with it being such a varied audience? Yeah. I mean, we get people really at the first stage saying, I need to talk to you about what a mortgage is. So you know that that's going to be really early days. Yeah. Um, but then what we do is we sort of put that in the pocket of people that are just inquiring. So we know yeah. that's not going to go to business straight away. Then you've got people they saying, the they've still got the same. Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. And I think it goes back to, I remember when I sat with a laptop with my phone and a makeshift business card and I didn't have a customer. Every single person that has reached out and made the effort in their day to send an email or pick up a phone is important to me yeah. and to the team. Whether that turns into business or not, if they have a good experience with us, then they can tell someone who may be ready to remortgage or ready to move. So I don't discount any inquiry. You know what, as well, I know, I, this is kind of, it's very poignant. I just want to kind of reiterate it for people. It's just about the mindset of that because I speak to brokers who won't speak to X amount of people. I won't do first time buyers. I won't do that. I won't do like every single person is a future lead, isn't it? And that's why. I speak to people 11, 12 years down the road that are still buying leads. Yeah. And you would think by that time, just through the nature of the fixed rates finishing, that you've got a business for life there. But because yeah. they haven't come with that mindset that you have, that every customer is super important, then that's why they're still that's why they're still in the same place. Much the same as those guys who won't refuse to change their lead gen like you have. Absolutely. And I think you know, it has to go back. You can you're gonna get some brokers or you know, anyone in any industry, really, if it's given to them on a plate, then they're not going to really know the the true value of that customer. And it's just a number. Whereas when you start on your own and you have to graft for that first client and you know that feeling of when you've you've generated that lead from nothing, every lead from that point onwards is important. And that's what I've tried to put that across to the team. And they all believe in that. And I think that's how the business has organically grown. Um, you know, I've never really promoted to, to take people on. It's just all, always organically grown to the volume of business that we have. Yeah. And, um, you know, long, long may that continue. Um, but I think the big thing is mindset. If you either want it or you don't, you need to put the time in if you want it. And yeah. I think there's so many people out there that could be fantastic on these platforms, but it's too easy to give an excuse and i think you just need to think right i'm not going to have any excuses i'm just going to focus on it give it a go and if it doesn't work then that's fine but at least you've tried yeah um and i think a lot of people will be very surprised on actually this this is a really good lead generation source and not just tiktok either just trying just trying different things it works yeah getting yeah absolutely. Now, that kind of leads on to one of my one of my last questions but and you have touched on this quite a lot, but any advice? Because there are going to be brokers sat there saying it's easy for you to say because you've done it, but actually you have to do it. But is there any advice you can give to those guys that are coming up with the a thousand excuses why they're not stepping up social media and why they're not trying to generate their own leads? What can you what can you tell them about from when you started to now? What the you know kind of any advice? I would say just don't really listen to a lot of the naysayers and worrying about being in front of camera. I think people relate to people that are real. You don't need to be polished perfect. It takes time and practice as well. And I think yeah. as long as you're out there and you're giving you, you good content, um, have fun with it as well. Let your sort of personality come out. And, um, and I think you'll be surprised of how many people will actually support you. And one thing I would 
definitely, definitely try to hit home is um, don't be disheartened if you put a post out on any platform and you don't get people commenting, liking or sharing it. Because I can honestly say the amount of business that I've had through social media and these people are good quality clients, you know, they've got, they've, they've bought properties, they've done insurance policies and I could say that, you know, they're probably clients for life have never liked, shared or commented on any of my social media. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? And they've contacted me through like private messenger um, or they've emailed me direct through the link on my website, which they've seen from my social media. Yeah. But everyone... It's funny how some people don't even know how they found you. I yeah. get that with brokers and they say, oh, I know I've seen you somewhere. I think you're on someone's podcast or I think I saw a video you put up or wherever it was. So like you say, like it's just touch points, isn't it? Stand in front of people and don't panic if you're not getting loads of views. But actually, actually something I do want to touch on, um, mm. and I've taken up loads of your time, I don't really appreciate it, but it's just something no, we talked about before, that mm. people will also say, it's easy for you because you're right being in front of the camera. Tell people about the first time you had to do it. Like, is it easy? Do you love being in front of it? No. <laughs> oh, far from it, to be honest. Um, it's just one of the things where you just need to just do it. I know it sounds really simple, but you just need to get the phone, set it up, practice a little bit. You don't need to put it live until you're happy. Um, like and just do it. And your first, yeah, and your first videos um, will always be probably, you know, quite poor and they might not get loads of views because you're learning. It's like anything. Um, I look at some of my first videos and the camera's shaky, the sound is terrible. Uh, there's, you know, even now I am an ass sometimes, but that was even worse back then. And I think just with time and practice and consistency, you can't do one video, leave it two weeks and go back and do another video because you're not going to develop. I think you just need to be that, that consistent, build it into your day like it's an appointment, like it's a, a client appointment, build that social media. Um, and if you do that, I think that's where you're going to really go to a different level with your confidence. Um, you know, look at ideas as well. I wouldn't say copy other people because it's already being done, but look at ideas and see whether you can put a tweak on it yourself and bring your own personality in. And if you can do that, you know, these people might go, actually, I really like the way they've done that. And it's It'll amazing. Resonate with someone, won't it? It'll resonate with someone that perhaps you don't resonate with or wherever it is someone will click with what you're saying 100 percent, yeah and you've got to try and definitely don't be one of the naysayers because you because you haven't tried it yourself just try 100%. the naysayers are the people that have never done it i've never met someone who posts consistently on social media and says don't post consistently on social media but i've met hundreds of brokers who tell you well don't do that you look stupid don't do that because you won't make any money out of it but they've never done it i just and it's, it's, it's an age-old thing, but everyone knows it. The naysayers are the people that haven't done it. There's loads of people telling you how not to do something when they don't do it. And do you know what? It is very much the law of attraction. And I know we hear a lot of this um, on social media, but no one really knew what I did or, you know, or, or who I was or Russell Financial Solutions, you know, or a small mortgage brokerage in Essex. Um, and now, you know, more people have reached out on LinkedIn, Instagram, I've done some uh, paid promotional adverts for companies because off the back of TikTok and then TikTok as well. You get to 10,000 followers. You have to do 100,000 views every 30 rolling days. And if you do that, then you um, then TikTok make a decision whether they want to pay you as well. Right. Um, so, so other, av other avenues have opened up for you because of. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so it's not just based. I'm talking what I do in my day job. But other other people then reach out um, opportunities, which then promotes the brands, which then you know gets brand awareness, and uh, you know I think that's that's fantastic because people then are talking to you, they're reaching out, you learn that new things with other people, and um, yeah, I can't see any negative to any of that really. No, that that's all really useful. Hopefully. This does resonate with people because I speak to people so many times saying, oh, do you know so-and-so? It's always someone on social media. Do you know so-and-so? Like, do you know them? Do you know them? How are they doing it? And yeah. the best people like yourself are happy to share it as well.
because you're doing it. And there's too many people out there telling you why you shouldn't do something. So I think it's incredible that you can, especially building up that. I mean, how many followers have we got? I don't think we talked about it. Is it 77,000, is it now? 78? Yeah, just over 77,000. I mean, I got about four followers when I first started and I thought, oh, this is amazing. This is quicker than YouTube <laughs> already. Um, and then it went to 100 and then within 48 hours, I think it went to about 140. And I thought, hang on a minute, what's going on here? And um, which drove me to, to try and do more and more and more. And then one of my videos just went viral. Um, and yeah, then I think overnight I gained about four or 5,000 followers, which nice. was just mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. Um, how long was then, it until you started seeing that that was your lead source? Like how many people did you have when you went, shit, this is the one, like this is, this is the bit that's going to, Make more money. I think when I started getting emails come through directly from come from TikTok and then on my link tree, which is um, through my TikTok to my website. And right. I think when I, you know, logged on in the morning and there was like five leads from all different people saying, hi, I've seen your TikTok video. Could you help? I thought, hang on a minute. This is this works. something. Yeah. Um, and we've had days where I've had 15 leads come through on a day. And the team have just said, look, we can't take any more on because they've already got their own clients and then they've got new stuff. And that's, yeah. and then the tap doesn't turn off because the following day is another six leads, another seven leads, and, and you know, and it, which is amazing. It's a great that's problem. That's a nice problem to have, isn't it? Nice problem. <laughs> yeah. And the, but then you have days where you don't have any come through. So again, it's just about managing your time, managing the client expectations. But you can't just then be super busy, then stop doing your social media because then it's a knock on effect. You need to yeah. still consistently do it to keep that flow of business coming in. And like I say, not all of the leads are, well, you could do something straight away, but it's all pipeline. And then you do yeah. get some that will definitely, they're ready to do it. And, you know, they want to go straight away. Amazing. That all makes sense. I mean, that's really useful. I hopefully that's really useful for everyone as well. So um, that's all the questions I've got for you, really. I think that's really helpful. Uh, especially the, like the TikTok stuff, and it's not just TikTok either, it's just, just generally social media, like mindset, consistency. And I know we harp on about it all the time on social media, but it's so important. If you want to build up your lead gen, then you've got to be consistent. You've got to have the mindset of wanting to go out and pick up business. And also, try not to swear. Don't worry about the people that say you can't do it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Good. 100%. That's really useful. I appreciate your time, Glenn. What I'll do. Um, now I struggle to switch this off like I do every time um, and um, yeah obviously anyone not being able to make the uh, live recording this all gets emailed out to everyone as well so I think there's um, 520 odd people on the database and another 135 people that's being out to so all mortgage brokers so I really appreciate your um, your time there I appreciate your time as well Glenn and I will uh, I'll catch up with you soon lovely great thanks Marcus thanks for having me thank you, thank you.